Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminal Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I want to talk about authors um, and whether they're quite as important as we think they are. So that might sound like a strange question for someone who loves books as much as I do to ask. Um, but I think it's I think it's an important one. And I think we as readers tend to, to put authors on a pedestal um, that they don't always deserve. Um, so the kind of the, the, the prompt for this video, and I would say this, as these Sunday videos always are, this video is the kind of start of the conversation about this. I'm really interested to hear the views of, of all of you out there. Um, and I suspect that my views may be very different from, from some other people's. So I'm interested to, to discuss that in the comments. So this video was kind of prompted by a video I saw the other day uh, from the channel Anne Novella, um, where Anne was talking about, um, well, the title of her, her video was, um, Should We Consider the Author? Um, and when I initially saw that title, I thought that Anne's video was going to be about the, the kind of age old question of, is it okay to read books by bad people? So is it okay to read books by by people by authors whose views are very different from our own, who may be you know racist or misogynist or homophobic or whatever? Is it okay to read books like that? That's not actually what Anne's, Anne's video was about at all. So Anne's video was about should we should we consider the feelings of authors when we are reviewing their books? Um, so I'm going to answer both of those questions and then I'm going to get on to kind of the broader point of the video. Um, so let, firstly, let's answer the question I was actually asking. So should we consider the feelings of the author when we are reviewing a book? And I think the answer to that is probably yes and no. <laughs> um, so I, I think we should always be polite when we're talking about books and, and reviewing books. And I think we should we should concentrate on what's in the actual book and not try and not not try and extrapolate too much based on our knowledge of the author. Um, so I think we should, you know, I think we should be reviewing the book rather than the author, basically. Um, but I do think um, it's important to consider, um, you know, to, to consider, particularly if the author is particularly vocal about certain topics, you know, that may well colour our view of the book. And that may be something that as a reviewer, I would want to you know, mention in my videos. Um, I, I consider my my role as a viewer to uh, my role as a reviewer to be to to make recommendations to people who are watching my videos about books they might like, and and in order to do that, I try and provide information in my reviews that I think is relevant. And, and you know, the, the the opinions of of the author, particularly as I say, if they're vocal about those opinions, may be of of interest to people who are watching my videos who are trying to make decisions about what to read next. Um, so should we be considered um, should we be con should we consider the author when we are when we are reviewing books? I, I think we should. Uh, I think we should be polite, but I don't think uh, I, I think we should also be honest. I think that's the most important thing is to be honest about our reactions to the book. And, and that's what you know my reviews tend to be. I'm not someone who does a ton of research. I'm not particularly educated about literary theory and stuff like that. What I talk about is how the book made me feel. You know, did I enjoy it? Did it make me happy? Did it make me sad? Did it did it thrill me? Um, that's what I talk about in my reviews because those are the things that matter to me as a reader. How is the book going to make me feel? Okay, so that's the the question Anne was was asking. The question I thought, as I say, she was asking is, you know, is it okay to read books by people who are assholes? Um, and I think the answer to that question is yes, it is. Um, I read, you know, I read a lot of older popular fiction which often is you know, sexist, it's often homophobic, it's often racist. Um, and that is, uh, you know, that, that's not something I would necessarily, well, it's something I would be more critical of in a modern book. And I'm not saying by any means that it was okay to be those things back when these books were written, um, but clearly it was more common. Um, and, you know, our, our view of what is acceptable conduct what is acceptable language in society changes over time so something that was not acceptable um, in the past may now be acceptable and, and vice versa so if you think about Agatha Christie who's, a, who's an author I've talked about on the channel before uh, you know one of her most famous books which is now called And Then There Were None um, was originally you know that the original title of that book um, had a racial slur in it the publishers at some point um, retitled it and managed to include a different racial slur. Um, and then it was retitled a second time and is now, and then there were none. 
Um, so that shows how, you know, what is acceptable in society, you know, changes over time. And I think that's entirely appropriate for the publisher to have to have changed the, the title of that book. You know, clearly, they, they should have done a better job first time they changed it. But it feels to me like that was definitely the right thing to do. Um, so, yes, it, I think it is OK to read books uh, by people who whose opinions we don't necessarily agree with, but I think we should read them critically. I think we should consider our own views, you know, think about how we feel about the things they're writing about and you know, be, be honest with ourselves about it. And, and that may mean that, you know, we stop reading the book. Um, I, I've talked on the channel before about how I have this, uh, you know, kind of scales in my mind um, when I'm reading a book of, um, you know, how for want of a better word, offensive, I'm finding it in terms of some of those those views which are, you know, opposed to, to the views I hold versus how much I'm enjoying it. And if I'm reading a, you know, a, a kind of pulpy detective novel or crime novel from the 30s or 40s, um, you know, if, as long as the story is is good and, and is, you know, engaging and I'm, and I'm enjoying it, I can put up with, you know, a, a degree of, um, you know, a degree of political in, incorrectness in, in the book. Um, but when I'm reviewing the book, I will call that out because, again, I think that's an important piece of information for um, for for you as a viewer who who wanted to make an informed decision about what to read next. I think it's an important piece of information for you to take away from my review. So, getting on to my question, then, do authors matter? So, yes, clearly, authors matter. Authors are hugely important. Authors have given me countless hours of enjoyment. Um, so yes, they definitely matter. But I think we tend to think about authors, or I tend to think I, I think we tend to think about the books that we read as being the sole creation of the person whose name is on the cover of that book, and that is that's not the case. So if you think about the kind of spectrum of of creativity, if you like, at, at one end you've got painters. So a painter will paint a picture, and you know sometimes that will only that there will only be one copy of that picture. It might you know there might be prints done of it things like that but there will be one work of art that is hung in a museum and people can go and look at that was created by that painter on their own at the other end of the spectrum you've got movies and if you've ever sat through the you know the credits at the end of a movie there are you know on a big budget movie there'll be hundreds of people listed so movies are a collaborative endeavor and we tend to think about um you know we tend to think about the director of a film as being the you know the most important part of that creative process but clearly they are they are only one part of it so you've got a spectrum there haven't you and i think we tend to think about books as being much much closer to the artist than to the to the movie with the difference obviously that you know you don't just have one copy of a book there will be you know hundreds of thousands whatever copies of copies of a book printed and, and distributed um, and the fact that there are hundreds and thousands of the copies of the book distributed and printed means it's a commercial thing. You know, there's cost involved in doing that. There is a publisher behind the book um, and they are wanting to make money out of that book in the same way that the film studio is wanting to make money out of the movie. Um, and what that means is they want that book that's published to be as marketable and as popular as possible. And in order to, to make sure that happens, they employ editors. So, the, you know, the role of the editor is a really important one, one we often don't really think about. Uh, you know, the, the, the role of the editor is to make that book into, make that manuscript that's been provided by the author into something that the publisher can sell you know, millions of copies of. So it's a very, very important part of the whole process and has, you know, can have a huge impact on the book that we end up reading. You know, the book we end up reading may be very, very different from the original book that the author submitted to the publisher. And, you know, in some cases that may not be a good thing. Um, in other cases, it probably is a good thing. But it, but it's a process that is really hidden from us. And we don't get to see, you know, the, the differences, if you like, between those two versions of the book. Um, when you think about movies, you know, when, when uh, DVD became a thing a few years ago, it's probably quite a lot of years ago now, isn't it? It seems, feels like a few years ago to me. Um, you know, director's cuts suddenly became a big thing. And it, it became more apparent to us as viewers that the, the version of the film that we saw in the cinema was the studio's version of the film. And that may differ from the director's, you know, vision. Um, now, clearly, studios started putting director's cuts on DVDs mostly to, to make people want to buy that movie again and watch it again. So, it was again, it's a money-making thing. Um, 
but yeah, studio. I, I think we are quite used to the idea now that studios have the final say on on what gets released into into cinemas. Um, you know, we know that they sometimes show movies to uh, you know kind of trial audiences and, and take feedback from those audiences and may change things in the film as a result of that feedback. Um, and that's not something you know that really happens with books. Um, and similarly, thinking about you know books and, and editors and things like that. Um, I did a video recently on the Goodreads Horror Awards, uh, Goodreads Choice Horror Awards over the last 10 years and talked a lot about Stephen King's, you know, some of Stephen King's more recent books in that in that video. And a lot of people said in the comments, yeah, Stephen King probably needs a better editor nowadays. Um, and he does. You know, he, his books are, you know, can feel quite bloated um, and they can have some, you know, some weird stuff in them sometimes, I think. But I think he's such a big name that the publishers are much less willing to, you know, impose an editor on him or a strict editor on him than they would be of, uh, you know, a new author. Like, I, I get that, um, but I do think his his work has suffered um, as a result. And I think with a, with a stronger editor, King's books would be better than they are in a lot of cases. Um, so, yeah, the editor is really, really important to the production of a book. And we tend not to think about that. We tend to ignore the role of the editor and focus entirely on the author. And clearly the author is the most important person in the production of a book, but I think editors are, are very important too. So to go back to my point earlier about offensive content in books, um, I think publishers will have a target audience for the book and part of the editor's role will be to make sure that the book is acceptable to the, to the views of that target audience. Um, and that is, you know, a commercial decision. That's part of big business. You know, businesses want people to like their products, don't they? Um, so that they recommend them and buy more of them. Um, so I get why, you know, I completely get why publishers would do that kind of thing. OK, time for a random book from the shelves. Today's book is Spider by Patrick McGrath, uh, which is a book I read um, a few years ago and really enjoyed. And it was mentioned very recently in, in the comments by uh, somebody which made me remember it and pluck it off the shelves today. Um, so it's yeah a, a creepy um, kind of psychological thriller um, with some very, very dark stuff in it. It was filmed by uh, the Canadian director, David Cronenberg. I haven't seen the movie, but I really should because I like Cronenberg a lot. Um, so yeah, definitely an interesting book um, and one I would recommend checking out if you like that kind of dark psychological stuff. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, do let me know in the comments what your views are on this. Um, as I say, I think editors tend to be kind of the unsung heroes um, of, of publishing um, and are very important and influential on the works that we end up reading. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, and as always, thanks very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.